said, if you want to join the European trade pact, here's what you have to do. You have to sell us cheap gas transshipped from Russia. You have to privatize, that is, turn over all your industry. You have to go through a massive austerity program, which is going to triple unemployment. Basically, they wanted to do the Greece job on Ukraine. They're going to turn into another Greece. And if you want to trade with Europe, here's the price. And the reason they want to open to Europe is that they're hoping that maybe uh, some people are hoping eventually they join the EU, which would allow them to leave Ukraine and then, you know, move to Germany and uh, and England. That was that was the hook. But if you want to connect to Europe, to Western Europe, basically, you have to turn over your industries, um, and, you know, throw another million people out of work minimum. Literally, you know, they're going to literally deliberately crank up massive unemployment. So the uh, so Putin not being a not being a bad chess player said oh well since they're putting uh, the squeeze on ukraine i'll make them a counter offer here's 15 billion dollars and cheap heating gas for your people no strings attached the, except that you join our trade pact not the uh, imf european uh, world trade organization pact and so obviously uh, the one which was punishment and the other which was 15 billion uh, free money, Yanukovych took uh, the free money from Russia. That led to uh, the West uh, engineering a putsch, a coup d'etat against the elected president. You know, this, you know, we're supposed to be afraid. It's the weirdest thing. People are talking about supporting democracy in Ukraine. They overthrew an elected president. This this new game that that people go in the streets and overthrow elected presidents. We we saw this in Thailand. We're seeing this in Venezuela, where the one percent is going out in the street and over trying to overturn elections. That's what happened in uh, in Ukraine. And I got to tell you, uh, Zach came back from uh, Kiev two weeks ago with pictures of uh, from the demonstrations. And like you say, not everyone's a Nazi. Not everyone's a fascist. But we has pictures of the of the you know the pretend stormtroopers. The swastikas. It is. Um, it's not very pretty. It looks like 1933. Well, your analysis is exactly like mine because we're not reading from the same sheet of music. That's what's going on. But then you turn on the news. Wonderful freedom fighters, and they're burning buildings, and and burning police, and shooting police that have done nothing, overthrowing the government, and then Russia. And I'm not romanticizing Russia, but they grab an area that's always been part of Russia in the past. Now, where they've had a bunch of wars, the Crimean War, they grabbed their military bases, their naval base, their gas pipelines, uh, and uh, you would think they'd started World War III. Now they're kicking them out of the G8. Obama's worried about nukes going off. This sounds like they're trying to start a new Cold War. Yeah, I mean, obviously you got to keep the Cold War is very effective in controlling the American people, and and, and um, our leaders and the elite really miss it. <laughs> you know, like the banks can't impose, they can't terrorize you into giving up your rights. They got, they need some type of boogeyman out there. And, and Putin is, it looks like, he looks like a, a hitman from Central Casting. And he, believe me, he kind of is. He's no sweetheart. But Crimea is Russian. You know, if, if we believe that the Ukraine had the right to vote to free itself from the Soviet Union, then how come the same right isn't afforded the Crimea? In fact, we've at, we've demanded that Russia and Russia's agreed to hold a referendum nearby in um, in Chechnya uh, next year, where they get to vote whether to leave Russia. So on one hand, we're saying, uh, you know, uh, you can say that if the people want to leave Russia, they can, and the Russians have agreed to that vote. But now, when the Crimeans want to join their Russians, they want to join their fellow Russians. And they, by the way, they get a nice deal out of it because they get better pensions by becoming Russians. Um, you know, again, uh, you know, suddenly that's anti-democratic. Now, wh which is it? We just supported the creation of South Sudan, which is already didn't even take one year for that to turn into a cannibalistic war. You know, so it's you know, uh, it. But again, I agree. This is part of the creation of a new Cold War because now we need. You know, we don't have communists there. Now we have uh, Putin, and then uh, you know, so we have to create the Russian bear again. Is 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 threatening New York? Well, I'm here in New York. I've looked down Second Avenue, and I haven't seen Red Army tanks rolling down the street. What I see is a lot of unemployed people who are uh, hoping to, to are begging the bankers walking by for extra quarters. Well, that's right. And I want to come back and, and get into the latest banker escapades.
Uh, and then I want to shift gears in 25 years, Exxon Valdez, how that ties to yeah. BP. You're breaking news on that front. And I want to yeah. ask you about the banker suicides when we come back. Uh, so we're going to come back to Greg Pallast right after uh, this quick break. Uh, here is the headline out of Bloomberg before they changed it. Banker deaths leave industry concerned as coroner's probe. And they've now changed it today to this. We'll show folks a document cam of that when we come back or during the break. But there it is. Good job, guys. Johnny on the spot. Bankers' death shine light on stress of industry tunnel vision. The same article yesterday was that the coroners were probing. Greg Pallast is our guest. There's so much crazy news up at Infowars.com. I'll get to some of it when we come back in the next segment and get Greg's take on it. But Ukraine's not the long knives, Kurt Nemo, students suspended for shaving head in support of cancer patient. Man, the attack on free speech in this country. DOD military training to, quote, scare the crap out of people in Florida. State senator's response to Second Amendment concerns. Go F yourselves. That's going super viral. They're already all over the mainstream news uh, criticizing him for saying it. So that, that's broken big time with our reporter Dan Badandi in Rhode Island. Uncensored video. Police execute homeless man for camping. Uh, it's unbelievable. Ukraine leader leaked recording. Eight million Russians in Ukraine must be killed with nuclear weapons. That's just some of the reports up on Infowars.com. And it's shocking and sensational because reality is sensational. We need to stop filtering what's really going on. And a sensational reporter breaking so many huge stories is Greg Palace. Greg, what do you know? No, I know no one who's got more investigative connections than you. And the numbers of bankers and, 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 and comp trollers and key management people that would be involved in cover-ups, you know, these are key risk analysis certifiers. As a top fraud investigator, do you think this is all suicides or could there be foul play? I'm not going to say a word, Alex. <laughs> in the middle of investigation. <laughs> I'm an investigative reporter, so until the investigation is done, I can't report. Um, just remember, we have a mass, a trillion dollar fraud. That was uncovered, the LIBOR uh, fraud. That is, you know, when you get your adjustable rate mortgages, when you get anything that's involved with an adjustable rate, that involves the, uh, the what's called the London Interbank Overnight Rate. That's behind all the interest rates, and that's set by a private group of bankers. It's not some type of government agency. It's not a computer algorithm. It's about eight guys who get together in a room and say what our interest rates will be tomorrow morning. And that's what we that's what I'm looking at. And and where I've gotten with it, I can't say because I haven't gotten far enough yet. But when I report it, you'll be the first to know. Wow. So wow. you are hot on the trail, Greg Pallast, right now of this. Do we have any number on how many it is? It's, it's, it's in the dozens and dozens now. No, the, and one of the problems statistically is that, you know, it, it, people do kill themselves and people do get knocked off for all kinds of reasons. Uh, but and, there's certainly uh, a big uptick right now. So even if they're not being murdered, what are they depressed about? Well, that's what I'm trying to. That's what we're trying to investigate. That's where we have to go. We got so many investigations going on now. It's one of the trails we're trying to pick up. So, like I say, I have so many stories to report. I'm always afraid to talk about anything in the middle of an investigation where I don't have all the facts in front of me. You know, you know me. I'm Mister. Here's the documents guy. So. Uh, I'm going to stick with those right now. I want to come back and get into 25 years after Exxon Valdez, but in the three minutes we've got in this short segment, long one coming up, Greg Pallast, what's the biggest banker story right now? I mean, they're doing so much. Wow. Uh, well, I would say that right now, the big bank story is really going back to the foreclosure crisis. We had a bunch of banks who were selling predatory mortgages. You know, the, the line that's being used in the media is that, Four million people who lost their homes. Oh, they got those loans and they couldn't afford them. Well, they could afford them when they got them at 4%. Somehow, as interest rates are dropping, people's adjustable rate mortgages, and many people listening to this will recognize this in their own bills that they're getting monthly, somehow are going from 4% to 11%. Their monthly payments are doubling and tripling. Now, I don't care who you are. The average American, if your payment for your home triples, you are going to lose your home. And in places like Detroit, where the industry, like the auto industry, collapsed, you're going to lose your home. But the problem was these were predatory mortgages, these subprime mortgages. And anyone who tried to attack this system, these were given out by Bank of America's countrywide unit. In fact, the head of the countrywide unit, this guy Mozilla, Bank of, it became Bank of America's unit, and he was a shill for them. The guy earned $600 million. Now, I want to say, not his company, he personally 
selling these criminal mortgages earned $600 million. He didn't spend an afternoon in prison. JP Morgan issued billions of dollars in predatory mortgages. That's a crime under federal law. And all I know is that instead of jail time, uh, Jamie Dimon has been to the White House about 90 times to talk to uh, Mr. Obama, who calls Jamie.